Hey there, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. I put out a lesson video every Tuesday. I talk a lot about music theory on the guitar and mapping out the fretboard so we can have more creative control over the instrument. This video is special, it's unique. It's a guest post video uh, from a new friend of mine, Nathan Borton. Nathan Borton has a YouTube uh, channel where he teaches jazz guitar and he does a great job over there. So it's exciting to bring him onto my channel and I'm doing a guest post on his channel as well. There'll be a link in the description to a lesson that I'm teaching on his channel about walking bass lines while comping chords for jazz guitar. Now Nathan is going to teach you a block chord melody guitar lesson in the style of Wes Montgomery. So this is going to be very cool. I've talked about chord melodies on my channel before. I have a few videos on that, but Nathan has a different approach, different style, different way of teaching it. Um, it's going to be a good lesson. Hope you enjoy. Hey everyone. First off, I just wanted to say thanks for Jared for having me on his channel. He's a great teacher and has a really nice way of explaining things. In this lesson, we'll talk about harmonizing melodies using block chords, much like in the style of Wes Montgomery. This can add another element to your improvisation and keep your solos interesting and fun. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to know is drop two chords and drop three chords. These are fundamental to jazz playing and really need to be understood in order to master this concept. Basically, all you need to know for this lesson is where the root lies. If it's on the A string, it's a drop two voicing. Here are the root position drop two voicings you need to know. If the root's on an E string, it's a drop three voicing. Again, here are the ones that you need to know for this lesson. So now we have our drop two and drop three voicings down. The next step is to practice your inversions of these. So what are inversions? Basically, all we need to do is take each note of our block chord and move it up to the next note in that chord. So for our C major seven drop two voicing, we have these notes, C, G, B, and E. These are just the notes of a C major seven arpeggio rearranged so they're easier to play on the guitar. If we listed them in order, it would just be C, E, G, B, or root, third, fifth, and seventh. So to get the next inversion of C major seven, again, all we have to do is look at the notes in our block chord and then move each note to the next chord of the arpeggio. So in our drop two voicing, our first note C would go to E. Then our next note G would go to B. Then the note after that, B would go to C. And finally, our last note, E, would go to G. You repeat this process until you arrive back at your starting shape on the guitar neck. Do this process for every chord quality and do it for both our drop two voicings and our drop three voicings. For time's sake on this lesson, I'll just demonstrate on the drop two voicings. Okay, so now is where we can start applying our hard work. Let's start harmonizing a melody. For this lesson, we're gonna use parts of the melody of All the Things You Are, a classic standard. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is play the melody notes with the root notes of the chord that we're playing over.
Then you want to fill in the middle notes with our drop two voicings for this lesson. So we look to see if our melody note that is played over our chord is a part of that chord's arpeggio. So our first note is an A flat over our F minor chord. A flat is the third of F minor, which means it is part of our arpeggio, since it's the third of the chord that we're playing over. If it is a note in the arpeggio, that means it will have an inversion that goes with it. For this one, it's just our root position F minor drop two voicing. Repeat this process for every note of the melody, and we get this. So what happens if you have a note in the melody that's not part of our arpeggio? Well, if that happens, we harmonize that note using a diminished chord, which looks like this. Make sure to learn this chord with the roots on the E, A, as well as D strings. So let's look at the B section now. The melody goes like this. So we have more notes in our melody now, as you can see, and some of them aren't actually part of the arpeggio of the chord it's being played over. So let's use our process. First, play the melody with the roots whenever possible. Then look and see if the melody is a chord tone of the chord that we're playing over. If not, then harmonize it with a diminished chord. Also, if the melody is too low on the guitar neck to harmonize with the chord, you don't have to harmonize every single note if you don't want to. Check it out. Okay, so now we can harmonize pretty much anything. Now let's add a bit of flair to it to make it a little more musical. Try mixing in other voicings of the chord that you're playing over. So for example, our first note in our melody, that A flat, let's throw in another voicing of F minor after we play that in sort of a call and response fashion. Then do the same thing for our next melody note over that B flat minor seven but this time let's add a little bit of chromaticism. And you can continue this process for the whole melody, throwing in call and responses, and then using chromaticism to approach whatever chord we throw in there. Again, think about it like call and response. The melody is the call, and the other chords are the answer. So we covered a lot of ground today. We've talked about drop two and drop three voicings, the steps to harmonizing a melody, what to do if a melody isn't a chord tone, and finally mixing in other voicings in a call and response fashion. This is just the start of block chord soloing, and I would highly recommend you check out the track Gone with the Wind uh, from Wes Montgomery's record The Incredible Jazz Guitar of Wes Montgomery. If you want to play in this kind of style, that track is really the Bible for this kind of style. Thanks again, Jared, for having me, and I hope you found this lesson useful. Thanks for watching. All right, thanks so much to Nathan for the guest post. Again, if you want to see my post on his channel about walking bass lines on the guitar while comping chords, check it out with the link in the description. Also, give him a subscribe if you want to follow his teaching in the future. Hope you do. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much.